Super chats from yesterday and other things, guys. Gonna try to get to your calls. Um, and some, my opinion, interesting stories and some comments, YouTube comments, bit shoot comments that I found interesting, guys. I think we are live. It is 9 a.m. here in Los Angeles. Uh, Thursday, April 18th, Women's Forum, ladies, 2024 A.D. And, uh, what specifically would I like to touch on? I may give an update about the shooters on scooters in the Bronx. I got a call, a tip, from a man in New York who heard about that, and he said it might have been some migrants. I don't have an update on that part, but I do have an update on the victim of the alleged murder who himself was an alleged criminal. What a mess. Will I cover the WNBA uncensored? We shall see. I still have to read Gregatron's Super Chat from two nights ago. Wow, what a mess. And, um... I kind of want to get to this Simone Biles story. Did you, did you know that she's married? Apparently she didn't change her name to a black guy. And this black guy said something on a podcast. She had no problem with it. And these busybody people, her fans, had a problem with it. <sighs> Ridiculous. So hopefully I get to uh, at least that stuff. And maybe other stuff going on in the world. But anyway, everybody, let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hake Report. The Hake Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hake Report. The Hake Report. La, la, la. Hey, guys! How you guys doing? I am fine. I am wearing my facts versus truth t-shirt. Looking back, I feel like I maybe should have designed it facts are not truth because they the truth is bigger than facts. It may include some facts, but facts can deceive. People deceive with facts and then people believe stuff as fact that aren't even true. What a mess. It's terrible. So you can get yours at teespring.com slash stores slash the Hake Report, which redirects you to the Hake Report dot creator hyphen spring dot com. But you can always just remember the Hake Report dot com. Okay? The Hake Report dot com has all of the th- all of this stuff. And that's a fact, says uh, Esoteric. Indeed. It is a fact. <laughs> That caused a lot of confusion in the chat, says Chris. Funny, yeah, I know. For one, people are shallow. It's interesting how shallow, and people just think straight to the physical rather than the spiritual. In so many ways, such as with the word love. Hopefully I will get to that. Hopefully so. Have some cool hake music, by the way, to share with you. Let me get to a call or two here first before I um, get into these super chats and other things. Kentucky John is on the line. John from Kentucky. How are you doing, John? What's up, man? I'm doing all right. Uh, It's not the Hake Report anymore. It's the Hake and Snake Show. (laughs) Remember that? I do remember that. The Hake and Snake Show. Per uh, per my my caller yesterday. Is it (laughs) Platt? An instant classic yeah. from Mark in Los Angeles. Yeah, that's my favorite call of all time, man. I've watched it three times. <laughs> right on, man. I don't know why it's so I don't know why it's so funny to me, but he was pissed, man. <laughs> he was pissed. He was mad. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and look, he's mad because you're giving a black man more time than him, man. That's why he's mad. <laughs> and you're making him wait. And I think that's so hilarious. And it's a particular, yeah, it's like a communist black man, a snake. 
<laughs> I don't I don't know about all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe seems to be a good guy. He seems to be a good guy. He's and, nice. Uh, he's nice, and he's uh, he, he knows how to conduct himself in public. I think maybe for the most part, of course. Yeah, and it's like you give people that disagree with you a little bit more time. That's the way it's supposed to be because that's what I that's what I listen for. I don't really like the calls where y'all agreeing with each other on every thing y'all say. Yeah, that's not very entertaining to me. Exactly. That's what I meant when I told him he's not very interesting. He says stuff like. Yeah. He says stuff like, oh, look at the whites. They're peaceful at this, at this funeral for Lake and Riley, who was killed by an illegal, allegedly. And, and that's, compare that to the Black Lives Matter rioting over George Floyd. I'm like, yeah, we know. Okay. Great point. But and, then, and, he says, and he says, like, you, which side are you on? Are you on the, like, I guess, white side or black side, I guess. No, he he means well, yeah, white side or anti white side, uh, and 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 also kind of communism versus anti communism. That's too deep for me, man. I, yeah. I don't know about the politics, but true. Yeah, man. I hope he calls in today. So, Mark, if you're listening, call in today and put Hake back in his place again. That was hilarious, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, thank you for That's your all call. I got, man. Glad you were able to get in, John in Kentucky. Take care. All righty. Bye. That's a uh, black Hebrew Israelite fan. Fan. <laughs> Next time he calls, he will say, I am not a fan. Hey, I am not your fan. <laughs> uh, I got to get to Dave in Ocala, Florida, who's on the line here. Dave, thank you for calling and holding there. I wanted to get to you yesterday, man. How's it going? Hey, it's going good. I, I understand. I mean, you got to get to other people. I mean, that's just the way it is. But yep. I, I wanted to talk about the uh, Section 8 thing, but before I do, I got a uh, Mark, man. Mark, I got two words for you. It's called medical marijuana, man. Go get you a car, buddy, because you're wound up tired of drum. Are, are you serious? <laughs> No, I'm just joking. Oh, okay. Do you do, do you ever, did no, you ever I'm do that? I'm just joking. Okay. Yeah, I'm just joking. I did it in the old days, you know, when I was a kid. Right. But anyway, so my, my friend, that girl I told you that gave me that Tom Petty tape, she died in Section 8 housing, okay? Wait, and her, your, your friend uh, who gave you the, oh, the Tom Petty Remember that girl something. I told you I grew up with that gave me that Tom Petty tape of, uh, Real to real that I told you about a long time ago from Gainesville. Anyway, okay. she she ended up uh, passing. I mean, I knew the girl since I was ten years old. So yeah. she passed away in seventeen in Section Eight housing, and her rent was eighty dollars a month. Okay, eighty dollars so, a month. Yeah, that's all it was. And she, she passed away in what? Tw- did you say twenty seventeen? Yeah, she passed away in 2017, just in her chair. She just went to sleep and Ooh. was gone. But it, anyway. Uh, and, and in I, 2017, the rent was $80 a month? $80 a month. It was a one-bedroom, <laughs> one-bath, you know, kitchen deal, probably about 650 square foot, something like that. And uh, what I'm trying to get to is who do you think was paying the other, the, the rest of that money? You, me. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Six hundred fifty square feet. What is that? Um, uh, it's a decent sized little apartment. Thing, yeah. Okay. You know. Uh, you know? What was mine? Because I had a nice little ta- uh, traditional guest house. They called it. It was basically attached to their separated garage. It like kind of came off the garage, and then it also had an enclosed patio that I could lock up with mm-hmm. a furnace fireplace thing that I never used. Rats would get in. Um, I paid, Where was that at? That was in Temple City, California. I paid six hundred dollars a month, so it was hard. Wow. To, it was hard for me to let that go to move here, uh, just emotionally so, because I liked it and it was a pretty good deal. But I was definitely, definitely able to. Uh, it was the right thing to do, because time is more well, important than money. I was commuting like an hour and a half back, off a thirty-five minute wow. drive, in your Corolla. <laughs> yeah. Five-speed Corolla. <laughs> yep. Check this out. So, so seventy-five percent of that complex was black, and about twenty-five percent was white. Yeah. Okay. Um, it yeah it was in here in, in Ocala, but this is what I want to let you know. She broke her. She messed her ankle up, and and so she couldn't really walk unless she got cru- had crutches. Yeah. Two guys, two black dudes, walked into her apartment, 
and stole her 50-inch TV right in front of her. Yanked it right out the That's... wall, t- took it, and took it away. Ooh. So that, when I found see, that that's, out, that is so evil, that female evil cruelty towards the innocent, not the innocent, the uh, helpless, towards the yeah, helpless. She couldn't get up. Right. <laughs> Just, so that is crazy. I, were I they, were they wearing masks at least? <laughs> no. They Whoa. Didn't care. They were from, way, they were like, they were probably like cousins or something of somebody that lived there and somebody told them and they probably lived like 10, 15 miles away. So they just knew nothing was going to happen and blah, blah, blah. So I went around that complex and I told them, I said, listen, you know, anybody comes over to this girl's house, but you know, I, I'll hunt, I'll hunt them down. I did the crazy Whoa. white boy brother thing, uh-huh. you know, like I'm her brother. I just about, I just let them know, you yeah. know. Don't come to this girl's house again, okay? Wow. I'll be waiting for I'll be waiting for you in the closet, and I'll jump out and shoot you. You know? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. Joe from Phoenix was trying to troll me, kind of like Obama does, which would uh-huh. try to troll the conservatives, saying, uh, "Well, Joe from Phoenix said Section Eight is a white thing; it's not a black thing. Most of the Section Eight people are white, so why are you being so harsh on the whites, calling them ghetto?" But they are disproportionately ghetto. It's not all well, of there them. Was, but there was kids everywhere. I mean, this one family had like probably six or seven kids. Okay? Yeah. You know, we're... Uh, see, one of the things I... Mark is, I think, somewhere close to my age, okay? Maybe older, I think. And he's... And see, you're, you're 41, right? 42. So, yeah, 42. Get it and right. Your, isn't your birthday July 14th? It's around there. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's he's anyway, doxing everything. He's redoxing right. everything. It's close to it, but yeah, you're close. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we've seen the demise of this country, man. You know, I mean, yeah, in, I know. Yeah, I understand Mark's frustration because a whole lot of people are distraught at seeing how rapidly the destruction has come and the uh, the fundamental transformation of America has been pushed since before Obama. And then accelerated right. with Obama, and it's just out of control, and people are yeah, it, people are blind. It really, it really started in around 1980, okay, with the Cuban situation here in Florida. I mean, that was a big thing, you know. And here's the thing, man. You know, we're uh, white people are sick and tired of hearing about this racist stuff. I mean, racist this, racist that. You know, uh, when I go out and I'm out and about, I ain't worried about white people. I mean, I'm looking at, you know, Cubans, Mexicans, blacks. That's who I'm worried about trying to rob and steal from me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. You know, so, and, uh, you know, this, this idea, like, Jesse had interviewed a guy. I've seen him on other interviews. He's just a total black racist man. I mean, this guy's so racist, crying about how the, uh, we stole their language and they built this country. Well, let me ask you something. How could 13% of the population, if that was the same back then, I don't know, build this country? I mean, do the math. Yeah. No, it's, so, it's a sh- hollow, we're a hollow shell of what we once were. It's terrible. Yeah, sort of. And then uh, uh, there's a guy, I'm not going to dox him, but he says, you ain't, you never seen a cop shoot a brother with a pair of work boots on, have you? <laughs> uh well, you make me think of ah- Ahmad Arbery. People think that he was wearing boots. I don't know if he was actually wearing boots. The guy who, the well, jogger, he was jogging. Yeah, I disagree with you on that that case, man. Those people, see those those guys there, those three men that shot him, or you know, or that drove down there to you know uh, accost him, whatever we yeah. call it. Those are those old white people that I told you that uh, pretty much died out. That's their son. And you saw how they're like in their fifties or something like that. Yeah, and those then they, they had one son who was like in around thirty. Yeah, that's them. the la- that, those people are last of a dying breed down here. In, isn't that a, isn't that somewhat of a shame though? Because uh, you're you're suggesting that they're the old school racists or whatever you want to call. What would you call them? What do you mean by that? What are yeah, they? Yeah, they're old. Those guys were old school racists, man. Those guys were. I don't. Do you use I, the term I, racist though? Do you? 
because I just put words in your mouth. So wh- what would you call them? I, that's what I'm saying. Those are the guys that I. Those are the type of people that when I was real young, okay, were were used the N word and were real, you know, mm-hmm. upset about the blacks, okay. But they, they, but then those, like I told you before, those people sort of died off. But you know, yeah. that, those those guys in Georgia are a la- last last of the generation. You know, they were brought up. Their parents taught them all that. Okay, their daddy, their daddy taught them to be like that. You know, uh, how do you know this, though? How do you know this about the guys who the, is a retired detective and a former uh, military police trainer, uh, the son, and then their friend Robbie Br- Bryant or Roddy Bryant? Uh, those, guys I, are, those guys are spending, like, life in prison or something like that. Yeah, I'm speculating. But, but how do you, okay. okay, so you're speculating. Because they followed I, I, him. I grew- they followed him, which... Apparently, it was ill-advised. I think it's just right. plainly ill-advised to follow a uh, black person who was suspected of stealing stuff and going into houses, which he did go into houses, and he had tried to steal stuff, and he had brought a gun onto campus, and he had been a problem guy, but they're acting like, the people are acting like it's a racism thing, when in reality, they're, they both have problems. Uh, Ahmad Arbery was an out-of-control, skittish, wild black guy who wouldn't mind his own business and who was squirrely and fight, e- too eager to fight. And then those guys were maybe too eager to... thinking that they, this was the old, good old days, and I do mean good old days, when you can hold people for citizen's arrest and, uh, and look out for your neighborhood. They mm-hmm. thought it was that, but well, it's not that. Well, that's what they should have done. They, they shouldn't have shot him. What they should have, I mean, it was three on one. They should have just, uh, you know, got him in a chokehold, okay? That's what they and, tried to uh, do. held him until the cops got there, huh? But that's how, what they tried to do. Uh, well, it looked to me like the, that they pointed that shotgun at him, and he tried to grab it from him, and that was a big mistake on their part. They, the guy should have been further I don't know, away from him. I don't know when they... When or whether they tried to point the shotgun at him, he grabbed at the shotgun and punched the guy, and he was grabbing right. at the shotgun, and that's very uh-huh. ill-advised. That's wild. Are you crazy? Right. They well, were trying to citizens arrest him. I really don't believe, and I can't imagine that any fair-minded person would believe that they would have shot him had he not uh, posed a threat to them. I, I understand that. I understand that. Do I you believe they would have shot him had, had, they, had, had he not been fighting with them? And trying to get the gun from him, them? I don't know, but man, listen. No, no, no. Do you think that? No, I want to know, do you think that? Because you have this... Okay, say you, it again now. Repeat do you that. think that they would have shot him had he, been, had, he, uh, had he not tried to fight them? Uh, pr- maybe not, but let me I can't believe if that I... this is even a question. Well, here's the thing. Put yourself in, in this situation, okay? You're a white guy, jogging down the road, and three black guys show up in two pickup trucks, and one of them's got a freaking shotgun, and they're surrounded you. What are you, what, what, what are you, what are you going to do? That's a totally different situation. No, I'm just trying to put you I in, have no I'm idea. in a fight scene. It's I'm not, a, it's not necessarily a fight I'm scene. Gonna go out, I'm going to go out swinging. They're going to have to kill me, just like they did that kid. You know that's, because you're angry. Gonna, that's because you are angry and insane yourself. Well, it depends on their attitude, okay? It depends on if they're calling me, like, say they're calling me honky and a, and, and, and a cracker and all this kind of stuff. Say, say, say it's going that route, okay? Then I know, then I might know, uh-oh, I'm in, I'm, I'm in trouble here, you know? So You're just, way just, in your you head know, on this, man. No, I'm just, I'm adding, I'm painting a picture for you of reality. That's not reality, that's, an, that that's imagination. Down. No, no, fights are like that. Okay, when people come and attack people like that, dude. If he, he didn't. If they didn't come to a, attack. They said, "Hey, s- come here. Stop. We're they're trying to do a citizen's arrest." There's oh, zero. Okay. There's so, zero indication that they were that they were gonna uh, shoot the guy had he not been fighting. Until with he them. grabbed their shotgun. Until yeah, he was dra- grabbing the shotgun, punching the guy in the face, trying to get the shotgun away from him. He, he forced them into a does. self. He forced them into a self-defense situation. He, you can you that's can criticize. Their white, that's the 
that's the white dude story, man. The black guy. But that's dead. clearly, yeah. obviously, it's not even their story. It's what I watched happen on the uh, on the uh, video. You, you can saw the whole video. I saw the video where he shot the or where he clips of it. It doesn't matter. Like he fought them. Did he fight them or not? Yes, he fought them. Was that a threat once once he's fighting with them and grabbing at the gun? Yes, that's a threat. At that point, it's a self-defense situation. You can say, oh, it's not technically self-defense because they're the ones who instigated the situation, but he was in, he escalated the situation unnecessarily. Well, one of the reasons why he probably escalated the situation is because it was three on one. Okay? That doesn't make you sense. Saying, that's, a reason, I mean, I'm a- that's a reason to calm, calm down. Hey, hey, whoa, guys. Hey, let's just relax. But he doesn't have that mindset because he's, he's uh, an emotional, squirrely death wish type of type of guy who doesn't care who has no concern for himself or others for his own well, life or your, others I, I see your point hey but i i look at those men and I, I i can look at them them white men okay and i've seen them kind of white men down here before okay have and you seen crazy. them have you say, have you ever seen huh? them kind of white men uh kill an innocent man without any provocation at all yeah, I saw. Uh, I knew a guy that uh, two white men that took a black kid that had a big mouth around where I lived and threw him into a a, a, a well. That sounds Killed like you just said big well. mouth. You just said big mouth. That's provocation. Yeah, but you don't just because some guy's got a big mouth and everything like that don't mean you need to kill him and throw him down a well. I agree. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> I agree. Right. You shouldn't do that. But I just I asked you if you've ever heard of these. Old school racist white men kill somebody oh. without any provocation, and you didn't give me a, an answer of yes. Well, you I said you said yes, you but you gave me an example men. that wasn't an example. Have, hey, have you ever been in the South for a period of time? Yeah. Oh, you have. Why are you What's Why that? are you so brainwashed by this racism thing? You're a boomer, huh? Man, I ain't brainwashed about no racism. Yeah, you thing. are. I'm just trying to. I'm just. I, that's just my opinion now. Listen, I saw it. No, it's not I your opinion. It. Nobody has opinions. Everybody's brainwashed into believing the crazy things that they believe in. Well, I just, because you don't I even saw, know these guys, and you're making all kinds of assumptions. I know of them. I know of those people. I grew up around those kind of people, dude. They, they, I they know, they but, just, but you have this boomer. Person you have this their breakfast. Okay. What? I mean, they just loved it. What? Okay. They, they, they just as soon as fight a, a black person as eat as is eating their breakfast, man. They and love why would it, they do okay? that? You get what I'm saying? And why? Because they're wicked and hate. They hated them. I know, but why? You know? Uh probably because it was you know it's in their blood. You know they were raised up to say, hate black people, man. Why would you. they? Why would they hate black people? Because their daddy before them did. Why did their daddy before them hate black people? I have no idea. Oh, okay. see? You don't know, you don't understand. Maybe you don't understand your own hatred. Because you're an angry, hateful person, admittedly, to, you've admitted. So yeah, you don't yeah, understand yeah. that, uh, why people are hateful. People are, well, yeah, but, well, you're acting like the that? blacks are just these poor, innocent people who... Who no, didn't do I'm anything? Not. No, I'm not, man. I'm sick I of asked them. you why they. Really wanted those you're sick of I'm them, sick exactly. Of Charlemagne, Oprah. I'm sick of all them people. So I'm then, why can't you admit Lee. that these that these old school white racists are sick of them? Yeah, they're sick of them too. But you don't need to pull a gun out and shoot the dude when it's three on one. You go up there and smack him in the head and put him in a chokehold and tell him we got you and the cops are coming. You don't shoot him with a shotgun, buddy. You know what I'm saying? If you were if it's, let's say you made a tactical error, all right? Either you were heated or overzealous or whatever. You were trying to do a citizen's arrest. You're armed, and you have your gun out because you're like, man, you got to stop. We've been having these break-ins. We've been having stuff get, get stolen. We're sick of it. You got to stop. You, you're in this situation. A black guy says, no, I'm not stopping, and he starts punching you and grabbing for your gun. What are you going to do? Well, first off, I wouldn't have got close enough. No, no, to no, 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 no. That. I said, say you made a tactical error, uh, and he's close to you. You have no choice. He, you, you are, 
picture you being the white young man who had the shotgun in that situation. You think that you would have been able to get the guy in a headlock after he's already grabbing the shotgun? Well, I wouldn't have. First off, I would have left No, 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 no. I'm not saying try. wouldn't have. I said, say you made a tactical error. Maybe you were overheated, because you do get overheated and emotional. You admitted. Uh-huh. What would, what would you do in that situation? A person is grabbing at your gun and punching you in the face. All right. Well, if I, if he, listen, if he, if he came at me like that, and I, and I, and, and what you're saying, that situation... I'd just blow, I'd shoot him right in the kneecap, okay, or his oh, leg, Lord. or his leg How are you gonna... the meat off, and then he'd be on the ground crying, and I'd be like, hey, I told you. This is not and the then... movies, man. You're not the person of interest, dude. You can't just shoot people in the kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I, I saw a black, a black kid, kid on a video today. I gotta run, video. man. We, we gotta know, we talk again I'm because not, we're, we've been talking 20 minutes. I know. You're, well, you're the one that went into the... I know. Guy. But, well, I just brought up Ahmad Arbery because you talked about... Uh, I, I forget what. I brought up... Oh, yeah, you said there... Are, you said... I don't know. It, hey, man. Oh, yeah, you I'm, said, I'm, have I'm, you ever seen a black guy get shot wearing work boots? And no, people, didn't. people claim, yeah, you said you quoted some, one of your friends who yeah, said that. Yeah, you never seen a black. A, yeah, and uh, then I said, well, black they claim Ahmad Arbery was wearing work boots, and then you remember. I didn't know he was wearing work boots. But I don't, I don't think he was. I don't know. He may, yeah, he we, may or may not have been. He might have been wearing running one, shoes. So, so who's in their imagination now, man? You I didn't say that. that. I'm saying some people said that. Uh, that he was yeah. wearing work boots. But I got to run, man. Nice talking with you. All right, well, all right, buddy. Take all right. care. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> A mess. You can tell it's topics that I'm interested in. <laughs> it's so interesting how blind people are. I'm shaking my head. Tom in New York is on the line. Tom, thank you for calling and holding, man. What's up? What's up, Hey, How you doing? Hey, doing fine. Um, yeah, I just wanted to call in. Um, you know, I, I know... The topic seemed to be about facts versus truth. Yeah. And you were wearing the shirt on the Jesse show, and it was just a topic I was interested in. I just kind of wanted to, I guess, uh, discuss it a little bit. Right on. With you. Cool. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I, I could start with what um, what do you see as the difference between facts or, or truth? Facts are oftentimes irrelevant. Truth is relevant. Facts may distract you from the truth. People can deceive by cherry-picking some fact or some few facts in order to hide the truth. Right. You, can, yeah. uh, you can know some factual things. You can know the quote-unquote truth, and, but, but really all you know is facts intellectually and spout off at people and bash them over the head with it. And it doesn't even apply, and it's coming off evil. You have no love. Whereas if you're a person of truth, a man of truth, or maybe a woman who loves the truth, then uh, you are, you, you're led by the spirit of truth. You're uh, patient. You don't believe the bigger lie, the big lie of anger. They, the liberals talk about the big lie. And it's about some dumb thing like an election, right? But the big lie is anger that everybody buys into and, and self-righteousness. Knowledge, people get knowledge with all these facts and they think they know the truth about the oh, earth yeah, is yeah. flat or the earth is an obvious globe or whatever. And that's not, that's not truth. That is, that is a disagreement over facts and it's dumb. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but the, would you agree that the whole topic is interesting or even, the reason we're even talking about it is because how, how you know, e let's say evil people uh, weaponize facts to, in order to gain some sort of, uh, to win arguments or to, to, to get, to, you know, to further their own agenda, yep. to beat people with, right? I mean, that's why it's a topic at all it's all ego yeah it totally is yeah. that's yeah. what the climate people the climate uh hysteria climate hysterics people do they uh 
they bash you over the head with their selective facts in order to push a communist, globalist, socialist agenda of redistributing America's wealth. Or, or you, in a, interpersonally, uh, people arguing on a radio show or arguing in person, they are, they are just trying to get an ego feeling of winning the argument or being right or whatever, looking right. down and, on the other person. Oh, and, and just quick, on that, on, on arguing in person, uh, do, do you believe that sometimes you could be talking with somebody who's trying to argue with you and, not, and refrain from arguing but still talk with them? Would you agree with that? I mean, it's kind of, maybe it's a little... You can. I, I'm yeah, pondering yeah. it. My only hesitation is that sometimes you don't want to even talk to a person who wants to argue. But uh, I think you can, you can talk a little bit with them, and maybe your gentle answer or unexpected answer, right. or even completely changing the subject to something more actually important, yeah. I, will... Uh, will break their spell of argumentative spirit, you know? Sure, For example, sure, yeah. like JLP, I listen to him on the radio show, and yeah. different blacks or whoever will call in with, and they'll argue over facts, and then he'll ask about their personal life, their anger, their mothers, their, right. their personal lives, and it's something relatable, and their spirit just quickly changes, and you will find out that they're actually open to the truth. Oh uh, yeah, that that's interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because I've noticed myself sometimes, like, um, and it, it it could be like with the wife, like you know, I could be arguing, <laughs> and and I know if I'm arguing, I'm getting you know, uh, some emotions are coming up in my body. Yeah. And and but when I'm just talking, that's not happening. So that's how that's where I was coming from with that one. Oh, totally, um, man! Isn't yeah, it like, interesting? Like, like if there's no emotions with it, I'm like, okay, I'm, um, you know, not that I'm judging myself either way, but it, you know, I'm, I know I'm kind of on the right track. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean. Exactly. But uh, but, but um, you know, back to the facts and the truth. Yeah. Um, it's. I find it very interesting, and and I feel like I'm um, coming to understand that because I used to think you know because the the left would beat as you said like the self righteous just beat you with the knowledge yeah. of the facts. Right. I, I've come to realize that as I'm as I'm beginning to understand the the nature of evil that they really do not even care about the facts. That's it's, so it's, true. If, if some is, Right. It's a lie. So, so once, once you're in a discussion with them and you believe that they care about facts, you've already lost because they don't. Right. Feeling, <laughs> feelings don't care about facts. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and it's not, it, 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 or an evil doesn't care about facts. Yeah, Which, same yeah, thing. And, feelings yeah, are it, evil it, or emotions. Right. 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 Yeah, yeah, so I, true, man. You know what? Part yeah. of the reason why I made this shirt... Uh, finish your point. Finish your point. Go ahead. No, no, no. That, that was it. I've just, I just, I believe I'm coming to understand that they really don't care about the facts, and that it's always a moral argument, and and uh, under the guise of a discussion about facts. Yeah, and it's really an immoral argument that they're making. Their morality is inverted, like they turn mor morality upside down. Wrong is right, right. and right is wrong. Absolutely, and but so, and tell me what you think about this. What I see is that they and and sometimes maybe most of the time consciously, because they believe that you know good is evil and evil is good. So maybe sometimes it's conscious, but they're they're not. Um, they just believe that you're evil, for example, or or someone you know is is evil. And they don't really care about the argument, but once you get into the facts with them, um, they just want to. They just want to win the argument. They want to keep you on your heels, and they don't care about right or wrong or making sense or anything like that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and you and, know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I know that there yeah. are like communist type people who will be like, "Well, actually," and they will just bury you with, bury you, metaphorically speaking, in a mountain of distracting facts. Some people right, call right, it like yes. gish, ga gish galloping. 
might be the a term for it. I'm not sure. But uh, uh, part of the reason I came up with this shirt was Trump. Trump would say stuff, and he wouldn't have all the facts because he's not a facts guy. He's a truth, pic- big picture truth guy. And they right, will right. say, well, what about this? Well, what about that? <laughs> Whites do it, too. Yeah, yeah. JLP, too. He can't remember facts that much, but he knows yeah. the truth. And so he tells right. the truth, and then all the facts people will come, and their facts can be a mixed bag, and say, well, actually, this, this, yeah. and this, but they don't have the big picture truth. And Yeah, yeah. And I realize that it's easier to not fall for that as, as I'm dying for my ego, and, and when, when I have nothing to prove, I don't have to get caught up in the facts. And, and I don't, because I'm not trying to prove anything to somebody yeah. anymore. I used to, I used to get um, tripped up because I was always trying to prove something right. myself. And, and because I was trying to prove every, when they would you know, come at me with all the facts to try to distract me, I'd fall for them and get distracted. Because I'm trying to win an intellectual argument. Yeah. And 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 then and then and then I would you know I would lose. You know sometimes people could make more sense factually uh, and and still lose the argument just based on like the whole spirit of it and whether or not they're being weak or what. You know what I'm saying? Like I, uh, I kind of do. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was, this whole topic for me became interesting when I was watching, uh, and this is before I forgave, and and all that when I was all wrapped up in it, more wrapped up in it. I, you know, I was watching uh, Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris. That was like the number one thing I wanted to watch. Yeah. I don't know if you heard any of that. They had like hours, like lengthy discussions, quote unquote. About about you know God versus is there a God is there not a God? Okay, and 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 I was so upset because Jordan Peterson was way more sophisticated, way more intelligent in my opinion uh-huh. uh, than Sam Harris. But he was losing the argument. Oh, he was losing the. And I was like, I was like, but he's standing up for what's good. How is that happening? You know what I mean? It it, it, it boggled my mind because Sam Harris he knew how to. He he was a a bit more I don't know clever or or a shrewd. I think Sam Harris is able to project a, a calmness to him to him better than a than this is. emotional wreck called right. Jordan Peterson. You know? Yeah, yeah. He, he's, I, I've, yeah. <laughs> even it, if it's, it's a false, a was- even if it's a false calm, uh, that is able to being able to maintain that on some level is and maybe i don't know maybe uh sam harris is actually closer to the truth even though he's a kind of a dumb liberal yeah you know what I, I, that that's um that might be true yeah because jordan and, peterson and, is kind of yeah he's kind of off you know on some way level. too yeah and and also but also I, I don't know i had maybe an interesting thought about what we're saying right now that you know if your you know father is the devil I mean, I look at it like if I was, you know, the devil. Uh, if you know, if your father is the devil, who are you going to make win the argument? The the worst you know, devil. Both, yeah, the the, 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 the supporting the de- your agenda more. Right. Good point. Yeah. The uh, that's why the e- that's why the so called left wins. Cause right. Both, exactly. That's that's my point. Yeah. Yeah. Both the left and the right are evil. It's just that the left is more consistently evil and the right is it's trying such, to be good yeah, and it's just it's weak at being shame, good. it's such a shame to see that because you you have people i mean and i guess on both sides they're you know i guess have quote unquote good intentions um but it's yeah it's it's a shame to see people trying to stand for what's right and not knowing why they're failing at it and um same goes with the christians and the whites the Christians, the whites, the independent thinker people, they're angry, they're emotional, they're overreacting to the evil around them, they're not loving their enemy with that calm, so they're uh, play- falling right into their hands, either by being afraid or being angry, and it's evil wins. 
yeah, that's that's how it wins. It doesn't care. Evil will argue with you. It'll make no sense. It'll lose an argument. If it gets you to, to react, it wins. So Yeah. That's nice, man. But, yeah. No, it was just an interesting topic. Yeah, great um, call. Call me again, Tom in New York. Appreciate you, man. Yep. Appreciate you too, Hake. Have right. a good day, man. You too. Ooh. There is one line open, guys. 888-77 Jesse. 1-888-775-3773. Let me get to it at least one or two stories, right? Before I get back to calls. Uh Shooters on Scooters update from yesterday's tip from a caller from New York. New York Daily News reports a man who was gunned down in the Bronx by shooters on scooters which is not as good as Meals on Wheels, I have to tell you. I, I once delivered Meals on Wheels. I don't even think I was driving yet. I was riding around with my grandpa, and we would deliver to the old folks who were, needed their meals, and so we drove and delivered me, meals to them. Nice, huh? That's pleasant. New York Daily News, man gunned down in the Bronx was expected in court for fleeing from cops in a stolen car. And for crashing, he crashed into a moped. He stole a car, and, allegedly, and crashed into a moped. And now he's, and, and then he was on, like, pre-trial release or something. He should have been jail, in jail. Maybe he should have been, maybe he'd be alive today. I have uh, screenshots from this article. Police were investigating after four people were shot on East Mount Eden Avenue and Townsend Avenue in the Bronx Tuesday this week. This is a report from April 17th, uh, y- yesterday. By Sheetal, Sheetal Bacha, Bancharia and Rocco Parascalan Candola. Nice American names. Maybe Italian, partly. One of them. Rocco. A man fatally shot by two so-called gunmen, I call them gun males, because they're not men, if this indeed was a murder, at a Bronx corner Tuesday evening had been due in court 15 hours later. When he was facing charges stemming from a crash in which he struck a moped with a stolen car. Miguel, Miguel Doleo. Nice American name. His scheduled appearance in Bronx Criminal Court Wednesday morning was a November 11th bust, but he was shot Tuesday evening, right? Afternoon, evening. November 11th bust. So on November 11th, he stole a car, and they let him out and crashed into a moped, and they let him out. The heck? He was also accused of fleeing from police, criminal possession of a weapon. You know, New York doesn't allow you the right to carry guns. Uh, reckless endangerment and aggravated unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle. Miguel Doleo, November 10th, was behind the wheel of a stolen 2019 Acura MDX. I don't have a picture of this guy. Doleo. D-O-L-E-A-E-O. D-O-L-E-O. They tried to pull him over near the cor- near one corner. Instead, he drove off and hit a moped. That's those pedal motorcycles. They have a pedal in it, right, I think? The man ditched the car and ran off. Cops caught up to him in the early hours of November 11th. The driver of the moped was not injured, fortunately. How did he, just, how did he not get hurt? <laughs> That's pretty good. NYPD detectives believe there's a gang element to Doleo's death. He and three other men were hanging out on the corner around 6.15 p.m. Tuesday. It's still somewhat light out, although if you're between tall buildings, I guess it's getting a little darker. Four suspects on two mopeds zipped by. The scooter passengers pulled out guns and fired off about 10 shots, fatally striking 29-year-old Miguel, Miguel Doleo in the chest and legs. Three other men were all hit in the legs. <laughs> I laugh because I'm thinking back at uh, the caller who told me that he would have shot the guy in the kneecaps. <laughs> kneecaps are easy to miss. You could graze the guy, and then, he's, and then he has the gun, and he got you. Anyway, one was conscious, the other guy was shot, unconscious, the other guy was shot in the leg, said witness, 20-year-old Wilkness Hernandez. 
Can't believe what my eyes were seeing. Relatives of Miguel Doleo, father of six, too heartbroken to speak about his death Wednesday. He was my brother. He just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, said his sister, Erica Delgado. He was a great father and a loving brother. He basically raised my son as a father figure. Sounds like a messed up family to me. Wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> they, make, they make it sound so innocent. Uh, Miguel Doleo was frequently on that corner with his friends. 29-year-old, bum, bumming around your friends. Not bum like a homeless bum, but like a... Uh, don't you have work? <laughs> don't you have things to do? A shout out to the people who hang out on the corner. Listening to Hake and JLP. Crazy. Police with the help of a NYPD helicopters tracked a man on a scooter driving recklessly near the scene and took him into custody. He may or may not have been linked to the killing. They've been going aggressively after people on scooters, the NYPD communicate, community response team. I guess scooters can steal stuff and get away quick, weave in and out through uh, all those taxis in New York, who knows? Riding around on illegal scooters, dirt bikes, or, and ATVs are going to be going after them. What a mess going on in New York. Oh, but crime is down in New York. Well, they're, they're uh, cooking the books. They're not being honest about the crime in New York. And my caller claimed that, that he thought that it was, uh, look, now they have to block off the street. What a headache. You're trying, to, you're trying to get home. I mean, a lot of them take the subway, but. My uh, caller thought that the people on, scooter, on the scooters were migrants, it, meaning illegals. Somebody was trying to rob a bank around here. The ghetto bird all up everywhere. Hake should be a police spokesman, <laughs> says Rocco. Uh, yeah, crime is down, down by hell, says Zenny. Exactly, man. They're in utter denial. I remember reading The Antidote. Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. And I read that in 1950-something, there were like 200 murders, maybe 276 murders in the state of California. This is Jesse Lee Peterson's book, The Antidote. A few decades later, the murder was six times that rate per capita. And it was like 3,000 or something like that. Crazy, huh? Because it went out of control. The, for one, the single mothers. We need to defund single mothers. For two, we need to not be allowing in these criminals. <laughs> or these people, these single mothers who raise criminals. That's not a family unit. They call them family units. When you bring in a illegal alien mother and her child, supposedly her child, Trump was separating quote unquote families, separating a child from a supposed mother or supposed father. He was my brother. He was, he was a great father stealing cars. And shout out to the great fathers who steal cars. No judgment from Hake. A loving brother raised my son. Whereas his father was a father figure. Another fake idea. Father figure. And now he's gone. So watch out on these corners. There was a... There was a... Nick, the American anger baby, witnessed a... Uh, I don't know if it was a... I don't think it was a hit and run, but a uh, vehicle crashed into uh, a family. A family man died right up there on uh, the corner. Wait, 
Right back there on the corner. Right there. <laughs> Trying to point directly, <laughs> accurately. Is that autism? Is that autism? And he should have been in jail. He might have been alive today. Reminds me of uh, Trayvon Martin. We have this soft on crime mess going on. You know how Trayvon Martin, another thing that I read in the antidote, I think, he was uh, caught tagging up a uh, school door, tagging it, you know, graffiti, markering it up or something. I don't think it was a spray can. I don't remember. Or knifing it. I don't think he was knifing it. But they looked through his bag and they found what police described as a burglary tool. A screwdriver. And items of women's jewelry. What's he doing with women's jewelry? A mama's boy. Maybe he's just a mama's boy. He didn't do nothing. (laughs) And he was looking suspicious, according to George Zimmerman, who doesn't just think... There's no evidence that George Zimmerman just runs around thinking that Trayvon Martin is, uh, is, uh, doesn't run around thinking all black young men are, are suspicious looking. If they're walking like they have since, he, what was he doing when he was walking around? What was he, how was he acting? Was he peeking in windows? What was he doing? There had been a lot of break-ins in that area, but no, the dumb, useful idiot people like the boomers... Shout out to David and Ocala. Want to think, oh, George Zimmerman was racist because he said, I think he's black. And George Zimmerman was answering a question from the police intercept people. Terrible. What a mess. Blind people in their imaginations want to pretend like these people are, are the victims of racism. I wish that we were more shamelessly, quote-unquote, racist, in that the people who are just fair-minded and force the law don't care about whether you're black or white or uh, Hispanic or Asian, just enforce the law, but I guess that's a white value, therefore it's a a racist value, fair-minded. That's too fair-minded. That's not mama enough. And it gets more people killed. These school shootings with all these children of single mothers or children of messed up families in, this, in the case of the Crumblies, because he, he had his father and mother supposedly married. And that's why I go after these betas, by the way. Some of you guys were going crazy over my coverage of that beta guy, the simp, who is like, oh, this is so wonderful, You're, I, I love you to his wife after 45 years of marriage. The weak fathers who stay together, staying together with your wife is the bare minimum basic standard, right? It doesn't make you a good, it doesn't mean, it's not worthy of applause because oftentimes they're, uh, I'm done with that, Hassan, thank you. Oftentimes they're, They are uh, kissing up, and the kids are still turning out messed up and weak and evil, oftentimes liberal. And crime is not the only evil. Mess. Let me get to Denny in Bulgaria before I go to break, guys. The lines are full. Denny, thank you for calling there, man. How you doing? Hello, Mr. Hake. Can you hear me well? I can. You sound great. Glad to hear. Mr. Hake, you were having a conversation about facts and truth. Yeah. And I wanted to make the difference. Maybe this will help. It's a fact that the, there is such a thing as the Democratic Republic of North Korea. And it's a fact that they have elections. Uh-huh. Now, if you believe those elections are true, then well, you have more than one problem. That's the same uh, can be said. That's true. That's a fact too. <laughs> Go ahead. Indeed, 
And the same can be said about many other countries that are quote unquote republic. Yeah. So just because something is a fact, and maybe this, because my father, uh, he died now, but uh, while he was alive, he used to tell me, when you give examples, make sure the other side understands you. That you don't don't use big words. Use practical examples. Use something easy. So that's a pretty easy example. I just wanted to to share it with you. Maybe this will help. Sounds good, man. I appreciate that. Um, repeat that second example one more time for us. Uh, I, I just highlighted that there are many other countries that are in the same uh, in, in the same situation. Yeah. You know. Um, there are, it's a fact that Trump was found liable for S-word abuse, but that doesn't make it the truth. It doesn't make it the truth that he is a R-wordist, apist ray, but people run around saying, oh, he's an apist ray, just be based on the fact that some dumb jury in a dumb lawsuit found him liable for abuse in the S-word way. I, well, my career started in the government sector, so I, I believe that I know more about this than other people. Okay. Because I was there, I, I saw it. So normally I avoid politics, but there's a good advice I can give you. Unless we're talking about the Pope, uh, or, or a bishop, or any high-ranking Catholic official, the sexual scandals should not even be taken under consideration. First yep. of all, you said Trump. Trump was elected to be president, not a pope. Yeah. The pope is not allowed to have sex. Trump is allowed to. Uh huh. And so, yeah. Uh, what what matter? And this can be said about many other presidents, prime ministers, kings, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, in all fairness, and I, I understand how ugly and uh, odd it sounds, but it is, and that's another fact, which happened to be true. Men and women are different. Like, for example, a man can really love his wife, he he can take care of her and everything, and have sex with with another woman every now and then. Yeah. I'm not saying it's the right thing. I'm just saying that this is how we're made. Right. Whether this is a good thing or bad thing, I'm not even going to talk about it because it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm just highlighting the fact. Women, by nature, again, another fact, are actually more sexual than us. That's how it is. They just don't show it that much because, well, it's just one of those things that they do. But by nature, women are more sexual. Men are viewing it more like a hunt, right? I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing. That's just what it is. Like, it's, hey, hey guys, look at what I did. You mean? And and you're, again? Yeah, you mean, okay, so you mean women are more sexual in that they are... Uh, they are more into sex appeal? Or what do you mean yeah. by that? Well, yeah, of course. Seduction? They're more into seducing men? Well, seduction in that manner, that uh, it's it's part of the nature. Like, w- women tend to take care of, them, of, the, of their appearances, of, of how they look like. Yeah, for the sake of, of their, their sex appeal. Yeah, w- why would a woman wear lipstick? Because the red lips are, you know, a symbol of health. Okay. Right, and that's part of part of that. Yeah. So this is how it is. So again, uh, you, you mentioned Trump. I'm not really going to, you know, discuss that because it doesn't matter. Right. It could be said about your current president, the previous, the one before, and it doesn't really matter because those people were elected to be politicians, whether they're good or bad. I'm still not going to talk about it because it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But since you brought that one up. This should be taken under consideration if we talk about the Pope. Yeah. If we're not talking about the Pope, it doesn't really matter. Indeed. And the Pope, and that's, in my opinion, it's kind of a dumb uh, thing in the case of the Pope, too, because, well, I don't even know if I really believe in the office of the Pope, the position of the Pope, as if he's some leader that, who's over everybody, everybody well, else, I you know. I don't either. I don't either, but. But they set those rules. I didn't. True. I would be perfectly fine if they removed that rule, uh, if that rule tomorrow. Yeah. But but they said it. They wanted it. So if you set the rules in your own home, well, you better play by them. Right. Otherwise, people will talk. So yep. there, there was never Facts. anything that a king, a president, or a prime minister should should not have a sexual relationship. That I, I, at least I'm not aware of that. Yeah. So 
I, I just gave that example, and again, my father gave me that example. Nice. They set those rules. They they wanted it like that, so you know, held it to their standards. It, it's only fair, right? But when you talk about a, po- a political figure, uh, it, it's absurd. Like for example, it I'm really a, I'm is an irrelevant. Accountant. Just go ahead. Yeah, I'm an accountant. I've been in a financial department for about twelve or thirteen years now. Who I'm having a relationship with, uh, how long, and what we're doing, this isn't any of your business. This right. is between me and the woman that I'm with. Yep. Uh, so the, the employer should concern how I'm doing my job, because that's what he's paying me for, Yep. which is fair. But in all fairness, and again, I'm just you know highlighting, those are the rules that they have set. So, you know, just... Another fact, since we're talking about facts and truth, to, to keep it on the topic. Yeah. Nice, man. Right on, Mr. Haig. And uh, that's what I was calling for. I would like to uh, wish you uh, a remarkable day, kind of uh, kind regards to your colleagues in the audience, and God be with you, Mr. Haig. Thank you, Denny in Bulgaria. Always classy. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. Guys, we're just past the top of the hour here. There's one line open. I'll try to plow through all the calls and hopefully get to more stories, hopefully not too long-winded, right? And, of course, Super Chats. I'm so remiss. I'm remiss in not getting to the Super Chats. But it is Petra Thursday. Petra, uh, their 1987 album, This Means War, Don't Let Your Heart Be Hardened. It's kind of a nice track. Hope you enjoy it, you musical Philistines. I'll be right back for the rest of our two. Hang tight. Don't let your heart be hardened. Don't let your love grow cold. May it always stay so childlike. May it never grow too old. Don't let your heart be hardened.
Come on, Simba. Let's go home. I can't share that link. What? Your content couldn't be shared because the link goes against our community standards. It's just a YouTube video. <laughs> Crazy. See if this one works. Oh, it's fa sharing Facebook. Did you know that Hake streams on Facebook? Allegedly. In the world. Let me try it one more time. Oh, maybe because it says this means war? I don't know. We'll try it one more time. Uh, thank you guys for bearing with me through the beautiful music. How did... How am I sounding over on IG, guys? Mark needs peace. Very angry. Says, uh... Sorry I'm sad 2014. Let me read a few super chats, actually, guys. <laughs> I've heard people tell me that love is evil spelled backwards. That was a huge mind blank. Says vet nurse. Uh... <laughs> Evil. <laughs> well, especially well, the way that they use love today. There are Christians who don't even know what love is. Thinking that it's an emotion and stuff like that. Hey, you're being cruel today. Listen to David. He is educating you. No, it's not the 14th, my birthday. Okay. Um, on streamlabs.com slash... The Hake Report, Gregatron asked, What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm laughing because Gregatron knows me somewhat from the, doing this type of thing. Why are you censoring women's armpits, shoulders, and knee areas? Isn't the WNBA advertising these ladies because they're pretty? And here you are covering them up. What the? <laughs> Let me show this. Thank you for your super chat, Gregatron. Let me show these uh, things. WNBA orange carpet fashion uncensored. I have censored and uncensored. We're bringing it back. Somebody thanked me in the comments for censoring them. Well, you might be taking back your thanks because I'm going to uncensor them. I have about 18, 19 different screenshots to plow through. Here are the WNBA ladies on the orange carpet. And then we'll get back to the calls, guys. Hang, hang on. And, of course, the more of your Super Chats. Here, <gasps> Cover your eyes, kids. And men. <laughs> Weak, weak men. Well, everybody's weak, right? And ladies who don't want to see this. <laughs> there, here's one. Ah, ah. This scale is, uh, I forget what. That's the uncensored one. Go back to the censored one if you can. That's, it's, who is that? I don't know. That's one of the black gals from, from, uh, whew. ah, so much better. Censoring required, says GG Cash. Oh, Lord. No. <laughs> the face one is the funniest, says Chris. Yeah, I had to censor the face because it might have been a, a transgender. Okay, let's show the others. A f let's just show a few of them because I don't really have a lot of time. Okay. Um, just plow through them if you can there, Hassan. There's the one that's uncensored. Now you see why I censored her in three different areas. That's the one who looks like she might be transgender, but she's, she's not, just because she has too much makeup on. White ladies, or light-complexioned ladies, stop using so much makeup. Everybody, even the black gals who use too much makeup, calm yourselves. Okay, show the censored one of that, because that's too much. <laughs> Doesn't that almost look like a... There it is. <sighs> it's easier, right? It's less stressful to look at the ones that are censored. Terrific MS paint skills, says Rich. Uh, 
Terrible. Haig is a Muslim. <laughs> okay, uh, next uh, picture. Oh, she, see, that's the one that I had to censor. Yeah. Because she's actually showing, that's sort of provocative, actually. Okay. Too much uh, skin. Too much face. No, nah, I'm, I'm not a Muslim. You don't have to censor the face unless it's a ugly face. And hey, you are still valuable, even if you're ugly face. Okay, next. Too much, too much. Avert your eyes. Yes, that's better. <laughs> I, even I even censored, like, the armpit, the uh, shoulder area. <laughs> I forgot I did that. I cracked myself up. That's not good. Go ahead. Next one. Oh, that, see, there's the face. That's not so bad. But don't you see that? I didn't realize it. I think that's a gal. I think, sh I think that's a she. So now you understand why I would... I started to, like, censor other areas, but I'm like... I censored the face. <laughs> that's a dude... Gal. See, isn't that a little bit easier, though? And I'm not trying to insult this person. Probably would beat me one-on-one -on -one in basketball, maybe. Maybe I could post her up. Boom. But, uh... But, yeah. Especially because you're dressing mannish. And that might be a... I don't know, is that a transgender? No, I don't think it would be a transgender. Just a mannish person. Or like a... Uh, Ike Day. Ike Day. Don't say that word, kids. Okay, next. I think that might be all the interesting... Oh, yeah, there is, there's the uncensored... That's our girl. She's white. We're on her side because she's white. <laughs> but she, her hero, her basketball heroes and heroines are black, but, though. So, shout out. Hey, we love black people. That's the gal. That's Caitlin Clark. Uncensored. Whoa. <laughs> it makes it sound so bad. Caitlin Clark, uncensored. But, you see, this is... She's the one who's like, she doesn't look comfortable in those clothes. And show the censored version of her, because she's like wearing a crop top. See, I covered the belly area. Tummy is the word I didn't want to say last time. And then the top part of the legs, because it's a mini skirt type of thing. And show a little bit less thigh, a little bit less. Because <laughs> these ladies are so S word jewel, as Denny in Bulgaria rightly said. Women are more sexual. Than men in in a specific sense. Nice, thank you, Denny in Bulgaria. Is, is that all the interesting ones, or is there any other ones? Oh yeah, there's. See, I didn't really need to censor her at all, but I did censor her. This gal in the wh white dress, athletic-looking gal, long hair. Is that her natural hair? See, I censored that just to be consistent. <laughs> Uh, why are you censoring their armpits and knee area? Oh, yeah, I didn't need to censor her at all. Another, uh, mildly attractive black gal, but I, I put something there, just... S-wordy soldier... S-wordy... Older... Shoulders... X-y... Olders, say... Whatever. Oh, and her, too, I didn't really need to... Oh, I didn't realize that she's not wearing clothes on that leg. That's just a big old, huge, dark... Tattoo. I like her hair. It's kind of cool. When gals tie up their hair, but it's kind of loose. Nice. Oh, yeah. See, I didn't really have to do that. Oh, yeah. She, oh, yeah. She, see, her too. I didn't really have to, although that would be against the rules at uh, the elementary school in junior high. Showing your exposed midriff. Midriff is another word. Which is to say the belly, tummy thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, audio podcast listeners, that's too much shoulder for my taste, <laughs> says uh, Chris. Yeah. So that's all of them, right? <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Hassan. Okay, so um, what's wrong with Hake? To answer your question, uh, Gregatron, I'm just having fun. <laughs> wonder if anybody else has fun that way. I know I have a lot of calls to get to, but I would be remiss not to read these super chats. Lin Yen Chin says, Jesus waged war against insecurity via showing them the way 
of inner stillness or faith, as he described it when teaching inner stillness to Peter and other clowns trying to walk on water. Peter the disciple and other clowns trying to walk on water. <laughs> Jesus was about war, not peace. He has giant robots too. Interesting. But he was about war against insecurity, which is the opposite of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I think he may be referring to my caller who is insecure and fearful about what's coming in this country. So bad so that he's willing to accuse Hake of being a secret communist. Lin Yen Shin continues with another super chat. Mark, don't feel insulted, quote unquote. Feeling insulted and claiming I am not mad. Oh, I am mad because you kept me on hold. This is my caller yesterday, Mark from Los Angeles, who said, the Hake and Snake show, because I platform a wolf in sheep's clothing, Obama-loving, Obama-style liar, deceiver, communist, platforming him and grin and keep him on for 40 minutes. Are you a secret communist? And then you kept me on hold after the people at attacked me personally on the phone, and Hake doesn't like that. Uh, proof that you hold emotion and not truth as your fixation, spirit. Yes, Lin Yen Shin, talking to Mark. Feeling insulted and claiming I am mad because you kept me on hold is proof that you hold emotion and not truth as your fixation, spirit. Emotion is vital, says Lin Yen Chin, but being ruled by it, ruled by your emotions, grants cognitive cancer. It, me it clouds your thinking. Cognitive cancer. Maybe worse than blindness of mama. You know, mama is blind. The angry, emotional people are blind. Calling their friends their enemies and their enemies their friends. Nice. Gregatron says, Hake, how dare you run your show the way you want to run it? Shame on you for making a show in your image. <laughs> the people who criticize your show the most are the ones who watch the most, indeed. If you don't like the show, stop watching. No, if you don't like the show, keep it up. <laughs> keep watching. <laughs> Although, if you need to do something else, you should do something else. Get a job. Get your life together. Of course, yes. Do your silent prayer. The Hake and Snake Report, says Gregatron. Thank you, Gregatron. And in that vein, there were a couple uh, coffees on buymeacoffee.com slash the Hake Report. Matthew on YouTube yesterday bought two coffees. Fred, the commie atheist, calls in and tries to get clout on a Christian show. He's a mess. Indeed. He is a mess. And uh, Chris Person, 77, says, It's funny that the callers complaining about one another don't realize how similar they are to one another. Indeed. I see uh, Joe from Phoenix and Mark in Los Angeles. Two peas in a pod. The flip side of one another. One is, is a f intellectual, fake, calm, fake, fair-minded guy. And the other one is a, uh, also an intellectual, fake fair-minded guy. But they're both angry and holding on to judgment. And on shallow, into shallow facts and not truth. See on see, bought a coffee. Save America from these vultures. We are heading into depression. Stand with President Trump. Stay off the paw, pout and chasing uh, fruits, peaches, <laughs> stand up, man. Whatever, Sion, thank you. Embarrassing. Thank you, guys, for the... Uh, are my chat messages being sent? Yes, indeed, they are. Do you not think you say... Okay, uh, quick uh, question from IG, Instagram. 
Do you not think the word you say and the racism you defend is not evil? You're a scary person. You're referring to me? The words I say and the racism I defend? Huh? How can I defend something that doesn't even exist? I defend people telling the truth or, uh, or acting as they should or acting as, uh, acting as normal people would. I defend the logic behind the uh, fair statements that people make and fair, act reasonable actions that people take, sometimes a little overboard maybe, which makes it unreasonable. Only, be, only the anger makes it un unreasonable. So is that racism? I think you've bought into a lie. You've bought into a lie. And that's what's scary, is that people just swallow lies. You scared? You scared? You're not racist, bro. It says Kid Combo 1. <laughs> I know. I'm the least racist person you've ever met, besides Trump. <laughs> Terrible. People in their imaginations and learning and brainwashing. People were raised differently from you, and maybe you should consider how they might, how the so called racists might be right rather than jump into the, all the ways in which you think they're wrong. Ponder how somebody might be right. Or at least just suspend judgment for a second. Suspend the knee-jerk overreaction so that you can calm down and see the truth of, of what I'm saying or what anybody's saying. Daniel in Texas is on the line here. Daniel in Tejas, how you doing, man? Appreciate you calling and holding. Well, thank you for having me, James. How are you? I'm doing fine, man. Appreciate you. I'd like to share my testimony of, of various callers. Okay. Um, I like them all. I like them all. And when they go away for a long time and come back, it's like Christmas. Yeah, isn't it? It was so good yeah. hearing from... Uh, it was so refreshing. It is honestly refreshing hearing uh, Mark from Los Angeles call. It gets, it gets... It may get old after a bit because he's, he is angry, but... But it's nice to hear a white man, an older white man, speaking his mind, even if, even if in large part it's of the devil. But uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of facts to what he. There's a lot of facts to what he's saying, and it's entertaining. Uh -huh. It's fresh, and it's it's, good it's, content. it's sort of free. He's speaking freely. This is America, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And you and um, it's not just you know a lot of people call in with. You know that are that are um, agitated about something going on. Yeah, um, get it you know, off your I, chest. I yeah, you know, you know how I get when we get into the Civil War. Right. Yeah, it's hard to shut you up. <laughs> yeah. You get. You get. I, it's like you get no, lost, and and then everybody's people getting bored, and then and then I'm like, but I'm kind of interested some sometimes in it, and then yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. It's a total ego trip. I'm totally stuck in the past. <laughs> right. I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Right I on, have no man. Idea what it, yeah, you know, I, I just go off of what I've read, what I've heard from other lectures, and I try to piece it together with a fair picture. Right. But maybe it was maybe it wasn't fair. Yeah. Right. But it just shows you that you don't really know. Nobody really knows what goes on in the heart of a man. Yeah. Except for the man himself and God. So yeah, I nice. am ha I am happy that because I, I was wondering for a while there where he's been. Same here. I wondered yeah. too, and I was like, I I I did not call him back because he left a message after I I left him on hold because I, there were, I had so many calls one day a few weeks back or several weeks back, and he was just being that petty. 
Like, there are so many callers who are just on an ego trip who just want to defend themselves after somebody mentions their name and says something about them. And yeah. usually I, like, def defend them a little bit or I just say, you know, um, but I'm like, I don't like to feed that ego of the people who, who do that. And so he got bitter about that, apparently. And I was wondering if that was the reason. Uh, and apparently it was. That was the reason he, that he stopped calling for so long because he got bitter. Yeah, the, yeah your, um, what, your instinct served you well. Yeah. 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 But I'm glad he's I, uh, back. I like them all. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, yeah, I like Joe. I like I like Mark, and I I I don't think I've talked to Joe personally, but um, but I talked to Mark personally, and I don't have any problems with. Him. I like yeah. I like Mark, and I know that um Snake Chat says, oh no, not this person, not this so and so. Right, they do it with me. They do it with other people. Yep. Um, but I've seen real snakes, and real snakes are a lot scarier. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I, uh, there were two copperheads that I saw the other day. Oh, you're talking about actual full-blown real snakes, like physical oh, yeah, snakes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the real deal is a lot scarier because you don't see them. Yeah. You've told me this story before. Yeah. 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 They're, they're out and about now because the weather's warming up. And, uh, Got to watch. Kinda, they, yeah, they, they're in the trails, and the trails are dirt, and they're the color of dirt, you know. <laughs> yeah. So. You know, and they got grass snakes, and they have you know water moccasins and various types of snakes. And there are some uh, rat snakes that aren't venomous; they're just constrictors. That, you know, there's a lot of constrictors, but right, it helps. It helps to know the difference. True. But, um, the, the ones that are venomous, once you see them and, and you memorize the distinctive pattern, you can just look them up. And yeah. Get an idea of what they are. I jumped over a rattler before I even realized what it was. I thought it was cow dung. When I was oh, running, yeah. I was running around in uh, about 25 years ago, maybe, uh -huh. running around in uh, Mount Sac, Mount San Antonio College down here, in the suburbs, and it was I was on this uh, race course, but I was just working out, running with my brother, and we uh -huh. heard the rattle. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, they are masters of disguise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I cracked. I sound like Obama. <laughs> and I, I watch your uh, your your streams when you go out to the beach and all that. Those are really nice. I, I watch that in the background while I'm doing other things. Nice. So. Yeah. Cool, man. I, I like I like those nature walks. Those are important. Same. I like them too. It brings people together. <laughs> yeah. Cool, uh, man. That's all I got. You can get to your other callers. Sounds good. I appreciate you, Daniel, in Texas. Take care, man. You too. Bye. Bye. Joe in Phoenix, Arizona is on the line here. Joe in Phoenix, thank you for calling and holding so long, man. How you doing? Good morning. I won't, I won't complain about being on hold for now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because I... Well, the other guy, he was on hold for more than an hour, and he never even got on air, which sometimes happens. I get, you know, I get... The calls get busy. It's happened to me before, yeah. Yep. And it's not as though I don't want to get to you guys. I like getting to you guys. So, anyway... Go ahead. Well, yeah, you're on short around. Um, but yeah, William and William, I respect you. Shout out, shout out to William. We need more black men like, like you. I love that you have your own ranch up there. That's fantastic. Do you want to talk this, to William while you're talking here? Because w William is is on hold. Or do you sure. want to get to your point? Well, I was just gonna say the Steph Curry thing wasn't quite accurate. Okay. Steph well, let Curry, me. Let yeah. me let me bring on uh, William in California. S say your Go point. Ahead. Say your point about Steph Curry. Joe yeah, Steph Curry thing. He, he he wasn't he wasn't worried about the Section Eight thing going in. The problem is that you know he, he's a famous person, and right. putting putting up a three story building right next door would invade his privacy. But folks looking into his backyard, yeah, that, that was <laughs> yeah. That, that was his, his issue. And he he even yeah. offered to pay he even offered to pay for a, a privacy fence to be to be put up. I, I don't I don't know if that happened or not, but he he didn't have yeah, a problem yeah, with the did. property itself. He did. Oh, okay. so so because I got the impression from Williams' uh, thing and these uh, headlines, and I I may have mis I may have been totally in my imagination. I got the impression that he didn't want these 
low class well, poor people, quality yeah. <laughs> low quality bums <laughs> who are who are uh, bad neighbors. They don't make good neighbors. <laughs> Maybe he felt that way. <laughs> okay. Up, so it had to do more How with doing, uh, privacy. Okay. Uh, oh, man, yeah. I'm out here. Uh, the last uh, four weeks I've been coming out to the wine country. Yeah, I do got some uh, land up here. Uh, I want to get back into my grandfather helped me do well. I actually helped him in the early 80s with cattle. And I think I got enough knowledge. And with the help of some of the guys uh, in the chat, uh, show me, you know, what to do with the electric fence and all that. You can re-engage it. It's, hey, man, if you put it in in the 80s, it still works. So I'm waiting for the, uh, and Joe probably knows about this, uh, for the land to kind of dry out a little more before I get the cattle because I'm going to get some about three, about five steers and one cow with no bull uh, because you put the bull out there with them and they'll just get pregnant and they'll just be too many head cattle, you know, for the amount of land that you have and everything. So mm. I know Joe knows about that. That's beautiful, man. Good for you. That's fantastic. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and the thing with Mark, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, doesn't bother me that a white man is irritated. If he's irritated, this is a free country, and he can say what he wants to say. He doesn't bother me with what he says. And I, I damn sure I'm not going to celebrate him being upset about something because that's uh, like um, uh, my man that just got off the phone in Texas, um, mm -hmm. Snake. Snake. Snakes are very, uh, what, camouflage? They, you know, right. they're right there. You don't even know. So, I mean, he's, Mark, there's nothing wrong with Mark's uh, feelings on, you know, the format of the show and everything. No, and I'm, I, I, I like there. the feedback. Yeah. on it. it was, I like him. Yeah, 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 of course. I like him. I respect him. Denny, I respect, I respect the hell out of Joe. Joe's got a totally different opposite opinion on a lot of things that I believe in. Me and Joe don't come after each other's neck like that, though. We don't do that. Exactly. We got respect for each other. Exactly. Well, well, aren't you guys you too, buddies? Guy. <laughs> What'd you I say, Joe? I respect you, too, William. I said I respect you, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Feelings mutual. Um, but, Feelings mutual. You know, uh, my... Hey, I, I think I, I accidentally got another listener for you. You know, my, my pastor buddy. Yeah, the one who told you about Romans twelve nineteen. Yeah, he's been li listening to you for the last few weeks, and he called me up yesterday after I call, and he said, Joe, I want to remind you of Luke six twenty seven, because that caller was clearly in a lot of pain and suffering, and he has a ton of fear and anger. And you need to be nicer to him, Joe. And I said, "Well, I will try, but I'm not sure I can. Uh, I can promise you that." <laughs> uh, Luke six twenty seven. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, praise for those who mistreat you. Nice. They're still, yeah. still working on me, James. They're still working on. They said God's still working on me, James. Yeah. Nice. There you go. <laughs> and what's interesting, you know, Joe, is that you're a Christian, and then Mark is a Christian. But you guys both. I'm Catholic. Oh, and then uh, and then William is Catholic, which is also Catholic. Christian. <laughs> right. And, and uh, people aren't people are nasty nasty when the pressure's on. Yeah, they get nasty and petty, and I mean, it's like yesterday I was telling you about the Section Eight renting versus the uh, private sector. I don't know, and I'm not going to mention this guy, but I don't know how you would want to counter what I'm saying about free market versus section section eight is okay for somebody who needs it for an owner it's a nightmare you got your k1 forms you got to get and you got to go through the county you know they don't yeah. call them projects anymore but it's still public housing and as an owner i make a choice not to rent to them it's not this yeah i guess it is discrimination i just i don't want it it's just le but it's, it's it. legal discrimination because there's legal it's discrimination right. and then there's right. illegal discrimination <laughs> Because your other caller says his, he wants his tenants to be 100% Section 8. Well, you just heard what David and Ocala said, what happened to some woman in her TV and all that. I personally don't want my tenant next to that. Understood. You, you know, it's William, quite understandable. I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I don't know if it's different in California, yeah, but you know, I, I, I've yeah. had Section 8 properties here, and it, it, yeah. it is a good thing because the money comes in on a regular. You don't have to Guaranteed. worry about them mi yeah. missing rent. Yeah. And yeah. my tenants never gave me any problems at all. I got little old ladies you know what, who are, you know, retired. Right, right. Yeah, go ahead. But you know in California the caseload is bigger. It's 45 million people. And um, 
you got a lot of uh, things like that you have to go through because I think the rent control laws are different. You have to pass through laws, and there's some things I can pass through to the tenant, some things I can't. Like if the sewer, okay. sewer line, the sewer line that's going to the street, Joe, um, I'm going to have to pick that up. But if oh, the, wow, it's really? a funny deal. yeah, I got to pick that up. But if it's um, uh, if it's something like uh, let me see, changing locks and maybe the roof, I can pass through those costs to the tenant. Now, if I have a Section 8 tenant, I don't know how it is in Arizona versus Arizona. I know in California, it could be a nightmare. It's just a lot more people. And I dig what you're saying, Joe. I believe what you're saying. You know, they're not all bad Joe tenants. was trying to make they're- it sound like it was a, let, let's get, I don't like this friendly talk. I want to get into conflict, man. Uh, that's, but see, that's you wanting to represent the worst of the blacks. I know, but I want to, I want to because you have to point it out, uh, Section eight was a wasn't that an album by that guy that rapper from Compton, uh, Kendrick Lamar? He made a whole album. Stop Section eight. Like you don't know who it is, that rapper. You know who it is. <laughs> I couldn't think of his name. Sometimes and I blank and a little WNBA bit. WNBA girls and that other thing, them WNBA, they don't look good. Stop, stop that. Stop no, that. some of them are mildly attractive that. for sure. Don't get out of here. I was right to censor the face. That hat got, that felt that lady yeah, had a hair I high. Trying to save hair my line. channel, they don't look good. But Joe from Phoenix, who's on the, the line WNBA here, WNBA is, is is a huge joke. It wouldn't even exist unless the, the NBA subsidized them. But it's it's subsidized by the NBA. <laughs> right. Oh, That's Section eighty. I mean. Oh, you can't okay. pay them. Wait a minute, Joe. You can't pay them more. Halftime, it's like twenty-one to twelve. It's terrible. Exactly. Have you ever been to work? There's no revenue and it's unwatchable. Agreed, William. It's, the, it's, I mean, it's the so, promoter so, so loses his. The promoter loses his tail on the game. It's like eighteen thousand seats and there's thirteen hundred people. They'll sell no hot dogs, no memorabilia. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's such, like you said, Joe. It's subsidized through the NBA. Oh, Lord. Exactly. Now you guys are agreeing really about the equal pay for equal work stuff. There is how no dumb equality, it is. James. I you know. You got hot, you got cold, you got stop, you got go, you got man, you got woman. You right. Got, it hurts. You got it feels good. <laughs> you got a battery. You can't have two positives to make a battery work. You need a positive and a negative. Okay? Right. You can't make a baby with two men. So exactly. there's no equality. Yeah. James, That's true. I know, I know you hate to you guys take care, man. Get to these callers. I know they're going to agree. I know you're going to be on fire. Um, and Joe, have a good day out there. How's the horses? <laughs> horses are doing good, man. Thank you. Lord. Thank you, William. I appreciate right you, on. man. Take care, William. All right, y'all take care, man. All right. Bye. Take care. Joe in Phoenix, you're saying That's I hate. I I, you're saying That's I hate I to hear black men disagree with each other. Intelligent black men. <laughs> Get along well, sure. You want conflict? I understand. Yeah, I, this is that was. I feel like I have to take a shower. This was too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I want to spit. <laughs> you guys are way too friendly to each other. Uh, well, I respect William. He's, he's a good man. No man is good. Anyway, um, all right. Let's see if we can fight fight about Trump. We see that they, they have seven of, of the twelve ju- jurors picked now. Oh. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Uh, but, but I don't care about that stuff. I, I really am not concerned. Like, whatever happens, happens, is my view, view on it. Because it's basically a kangaroo court. I don't, I don't really respect courts. I respect <laughs> them in that they, they can put me in jail. Or whatever. You wanted to be on, uh, on the jury, you said? Yeah, I, I totally wanted to be on this jury on a civil case in a, within a car accident. But I think mm-hmm. they doxed me. I think they, one of the lawyers looked me up and saw I was controversial. <laughs> uh uh-huh. There you go. So, what a mess. I was thinking about you, man. Uh, you want to make a federal case out of it, out of my mild and fair-minded and loving criticism for the blacks. And you want to make a federal case out of it. You want to you bring up these uh, terrorism laws and, and stick this terrorism stuff that other people commit on on me and I'm nothing like that and I'm I'm not not even insightful whatsoever. I disagree. I think you say a lot of things that that some of these so-called terrorists say, just in a, a perhaps more mild way. I know, but and terrorists again, say the sky is blue too. It doesn't it doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't mean that I'm wrong that the sky is blue. They say I'm stuff that stick, reasonable stick people say. With it. I'm actually trying to warn you about it, and. 
keep you out of the trouble. No, I think that but, you would be, I personally think that you would be gleeful. Because look at how gleeful you are about Trump getting uh, persecuted with the law and Alex Jones, my competitor. You, you, would, you would love for uh, JLP and Hake to be banned, would you not? JLP more than you. I don't, I don't want to see you banned. Otherwise, I would not have brought it up to you. And Trump and you seem and like Jones you are criminals. No, oh, come on, man. Okay, you, you see, you it's not persecution; it's justice. You just acknowledge that you would like to see JLP uh, censored, and you have sort of justified the censorship that comes down on us. Uh, that's that's evil. That's uh, mama spirit. That's communism. And you seem to, I notice you don't seem to call JLP anymore. You call into Hake and argue mm-hmm. about JLP's points with Hake. Eh, not so much. I tend, I tend to stick to what you're saying, but I, I will bring him up from time to time, yeah. Yeah, because, for example, just yesterday when we had that argument, you brought up, did you know that the affirmative action laws don't say they don't have to be qualified? That's something that JLP sure. says. That's not something that I say. It's something that I believe you have said, yeah. I've never said I've never suggested that it's written down there. I wouldn't think that it's written down there, but you are you are setting up a straw man as though you thought you were making a great point. And then when I said, "Well, that does happen in practice," you acknowledged that I was right that it does happen in practice. This uh un, un unqualified or lesser qualified people getting preferential treatment. I remember you agreeing with the nonsense totally debunked story about the black air traffic controllers, and that's what I was thinking of when I, when I said that, actually. Oh, I, the reason I stand, I defend that, not because I have any knowledge of that story, because I've never looked into it, I don't know, and I don't care, right? Mm-hmm. But this, uh, I defend that because you said that the FAA or some organization looked into it and found that there was, found, quote-unquote, that there was no, um, you know, bias or whatever, but that's the FAA the, yeah. looked look into it, found no cheating, no lowering of standards, no nothing, and reported it to Congress because Congress asked them and asked them they ordered them to investigate it because that, that that's a national safety issue. Do you want to hear my reaction to that? Go right ahead. Ooh, the FAA and Congress, like they're trustworthy. That's my point. Is that well, I don't trust lying, these people. And can you Congress can is, you, is a felony, so. I know, but the Congress are liars themselves, and, and you, can, you have plausible deniability when you say you've looked into it and haven't found anything. You cover your tracks and cover your, you cover yourself. It's, uh, these people yeah, are it's not... It's all your imagination. Well, is it, yes, yeah. that, yes, I imagine that, that's, that that does happen. But my point is, uh, look at the insane false values that these uh, FAA themselves probably. Uh, diversity, Congress themselves, diversity, anti-racism, and uh, James. Congress is not diversity. Congress, you have to win an election. What are you talking about? But I'm talking about. Con- I'm not talking about how Congress gets to be Congress. I'm talking about the values that they that they push. They believe in racism. They believe in diversity and stuff, including the Republicans. They're pathetic. Make me want to spit. And so. Oh, James. And, and know everybody you, know knows that Cong- like do you think a, of the Congress white pe- country? But hold on, 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 man. Uh, do you think that Congress is values integrity? The congressmen? They value their their jobs and their paychecks. Exactly. They don't value mm-hmm. integrity. Which means they're going to protect their jobs and their paychecks, and they don't want a national crisis um, and public safety issue because then they they would be blamed for that. Right. That's how you know. That's how you know they took they took that issue seriously. Right, but that's that just means that they want to cover their bases just so that it looks like they've covered their bases. They don't care that it gets a little out of control. They're fine with the out of control border. They're fine with out of control crime. They're fine with out of control homelessness. And that's what Not we're a seeing. Public safety issue, James. Th- those are public it- safety issues. The border, yeah. crime, homelessness, that's public safety issues. That has quality of life. People's quality well, yeah, of life yeah. has gone down, and they don't care. If, as JLT says, planes are falling out of the sky because black air traffic control is unqualified, 
Congress who would, would be hung out to dry, and they would lose their jobs, and they would lose their paychecks, and that's what they care about. So that, that's how you know they do a thorough investigation. <laughs> uh, you're kidding yourself. But, man, I got to nope. run. What, uh, nice talking with you, I guess. Have a good day. All right, you too. Bye. <sighs> Kareem in New York is on the line here. Kareem, thanks for calling there and holding. What's up? Hey, hey, thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah. I'm going to hit statistics. I'm going to hit uh, uh, Joe from Phoenix and Mark. Uh, okay. Mark is uh, Iron Mark Tyson from yesterday. Uh-huh. You, you know who he is? <laughs> yes. He had you on the ropes. You were on the ropes. <laughs> you uh, thought so? Have you been doing shadow boxing today or no? You know what? I was nursing my wounds. I was licking my wounds. <laughs> Must have hurt. <laughs> uh, but that is a lot of anger. And, yeah. Um, when you're angry, you're blind. Jesse's so right. Yeah. Uh, for Joe, I hear Joe say he wants to ban Jesse. And I think, wow, anti-free speech. Yep. And then I look at myself and say, I was just saying yesterday, ban Joe from Phoenix for right. your show. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The same exact thing. Everything you think about him, even if you have the same views, as strongly as he feels about those views, you feel strongly. And I think it's something Jesse's been saying. I hate to bring up Jesse so much on the show, but no, you're fine. Jesse's been saying, um, well, he looks back on his experience protesting. Nothing got done, but he, I think he does realize he was just like the people on the other side of the street. Yeah, just ego. He had the same spirit. And it doesn't matter what you're fighting for. You're finding a reason to fight. Yeah. It's like when you get in a fight and you tell someone, because of this, I don't think there's any reason. True. No matter how good your excuse. Now, moving on to statistics, I'll say uh, statistics, like the facts, yep. being statistics, and the truth. Um, people love statistics. They can manipulate them. Yeah. 49% could be nearly half agree with me. 49% could also be uh, less than half agree with me. So you could skew the numbers. And right. With the car, you'll, and with a car, you'll get something like, this is a Mercedes-Benz V12, $100,000, the most modern everything. That's the facts. The truth is that car is going to be worth ten grand in three years. <laughs> it's a piece of junk. Right. So. Nice, man. Uh, that's want to bring you some facts and and i do want to argue with you okay I see how much airtime joe gets yeah so is mark banned from the show no he's not banned i banned him he's, back in the day and it may have been a misunderstanding because he's kind of a boom boomer or maybe or, or so and and so i may have misunderstood him he is he is a little over the top with his oh, uh Stuff, oh, but sorry. no, I, hey, but I he's not bad. I have to start with a poem. I forgot. <laughs> okay. When you spent the rent, you'll get sentimental. But I don't give a damn, dog. Save it for your landlord. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but Iron Mark Tyson definitely, definitely needs his own podcast. <laughs> and it's going to be Mark My Words. Nice. Right on, Kareem. You can be his producer, maybe. I wonder if you, are you a are you a Black American? Are you, are you a Negro, as he would call you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Hey, no, but my son is okay. Nice. So you know, I have to represent through uh, his culture. Is that your well? Uh, not to dox you, but is that your real name, Kareem, or is this a pen name? You don't have to tell me. I, not to dox you, but let me dox you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I am. I, I'm curious, but you don't have to answer this question. So that's that's what I mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said, not to dox you, but to dox you. Right. Thank you. I know. Don't answer that then. <laughs> Let's leave it alone. Uh, hey, I appreciate everything you do, though. I enjoy uh, listening. And if you want, I'll call it more often. Of course. Yeah, you're welcome. But it's to. always going to start with a poem. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh, and I'll try to keep the, the cuss words out. Yeah, because, damn, you said, damn, that's the, that's the original I, I curse. I knew that you would, I knew, but you repeated it just now because it's not really that big. Right. And that lyric is just, you know, yeah. that's what you have to say in that lyric. Yep. All right, man. Uh, Appreciate you, man. Me. Take care. Sorry I didn't let you talk. Oh, you're fine. All right. Sorry. Bye.
Let me double check for any remaining super chats because I don't want to be remiss in not getting to the super chats. At this point, just call me Mike Bought Five Coffees. A debate between Joe the Snake and Grand Wizard Mark, hosted by Holy Hake, would be an historical moment. And let's not forget Wigger Will <laughs> versus Marvelous Maze. That could be interesting. Hmm, emoji thinking. Uh, salute and Blue Heart. Thank you, Mike. As always, man. <sighs> My goodness. What am I going to do? How much time do we have here? Because the lines are full. <sighs> it's just at five minutes till. And I have a rule, guys, that I don't take callers at five minutes till. And I, it's five minutes till five till. Joel Friday is coming up next, guys. Um, I, I would love to get to... What are you doing? Stop it. <laughs> Joel Friday in here getting his stuff ready. <laughs> His bag. I would love to get to my favorite caller, Maze, who wanted to give her purpose in calling. She was on hold forever. Artie Art from Ohio wanted to talk about this Lake and Riley versus the George Floyd uh, comment from Mark in Los Angeles, who said, "Oh, Lake and Riley, they were peaceful, uh, peacefully gathering to have a funeral, and then George Floyd, they had this nasty." Worldwide riot, rioting and insurrection. Uh, Art from Ohio ha wanted to make a comment about that, and I would love to talk about that more because I don't think that that's it's like a boring thing. Okay, yes, we already we already know whites are more uh, peaceful, but where's the depth to it? Because whites being peaceful but still emotional towards R Lake and Riley, there was a person who thought, oh, so you saying they can't show empathy? They can, but it's gonna, not going to do any good. And then Mark himself from Los Angeles wanted to respond to calls and comments. And of course, Rick in Hampton, Virginia wanted to talk about being sick of diversity and Democrat talking points. And the rest of the callers, I cannot get to you. Super chatters, I think I'm caught up with you, but there were some comments I wanted to get to, including a bit shoot couple of comments about Trump. But guys, I got to end. Again, Joel Friday TV is coming up next. This is uh, Torah, Torah, Torrance. It's Torah, Torah, Torrance, Tours Day. Hat tip to the, our resident pagan, Kevin Howe. Thor's Day, Thor's Day. Killer cut the phone line from the 2000, 2001 album, Get Into It. Hope you enjoy it, you musical Philistines. Adios, America. Joel Friday TV coming up next. Bye. It's Christian, maybe, guys, from Lufo Records. I like his bratty vocals. So good. Look at that spider. I don't know what it's about. Is this Oasis? 
I don't like those vocals. Adios, America.